Hey, Forrest. Hello, Nick. Did you like that sick ass intro? Yeah, I, I like the drum solo the best. Yeah, the, 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 yeah, that was, that was cool. I, I like that drum. It was, it was good. I should thank the band. Um, I hired them fifty thousand dollars. What's the name of the band? The name of the band is We Like to Rip People Off by Pretending to Play Instruments When We Just uh, Use Our Mouths. That's a really long name for a band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They usually go by the abbreviation, which I can't remember right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, welcome to the fifth, sixth, fifteenth, fifteenth, yeah, 15th episode of the Poke Bears, or the first one for the Pokemon movie. Yeah, this is our first Pokemon movie review. Bah! Because chronologically, it probably fits in around here. Yeah, it, well, it would be uh, before the last two episodes that we reviewed. That we reviewed. Ah, yes. Okay. However, before we get to the Pokemon movie, which we're super excited to talk about. They take a little vacation. (laughs) Yeah. If you will. Yep. We got to talk about Pikachu's Vacation, also known as Pikachu the Movie, according to the title card. It is the first Pikachu movie. Yeah. And who knew that they would make more Pikachu movies? I mean, you would think. Pikachu is, like, more popular than God. I mean, he is, actually. That's fair. <laughs> um, well, did they know that they were going to make more Pokemon at the time? More Pokemon? Yeah, because Generation 2... Oh, you know what? Well, yeah, Generation they did. Generation 2 was Generation 2 was going to be the final thing initially, and then they decided to make more. So never mind. Because, yeah, they knew they were going to make because more. Because when you're making a crap ton of money, why stop? That's a good, that's a good point. And also, they named their first movie The First Movie. That's also fair. <laughs> All right, so let's get started with uh, the short that appears before the movie called Pikachu's Vacation. And it just has the most adorable opening. Yeah, with Pikachu, with, like, like, trying to get through the hole. Oh, I mean, that that's the most adorable intro, sure. But I'm talking about, like, the opening of the movie, and it's just Pikachu's face. Yeah. And it, like, pans around his face. Yeah. He's just smiling and being He's just adorable smiling and being, being adorable. Pikachu. And then we get to this, like, uh, I guess it's just like a little Pokemon vacation area. Like, it's a little park. Yeah. It, it, it looks like a cheap Disneyland. A super cheap Disneyland. They're just like, all right, we got some wind slides, and then and there's some, this natural watering hole, and that's it. And a, a, big, a big mountain. And a big mountain. Go have fun. Just just go have fun. I mean, you really, they could just go have fun kind of anywhere. They could. Since there aren't any, like, rides or anything. They could have more fun. Here, because they got wood slides. Wooden slides. Don't get your go and get spillers and your stone houses butt. for some reason or whatever yeah. those things are called. Oh yeah, I forgot about those. Um, and then uh, to date this movie, we have some vitamin C playing along in the uh, yeah. credits scene. Yeah. Remember vitamin C? I, uh, yeah, no, I do not. <laughs> I, I remember her. She was hot. Uh, the uh, the opening scene where they're all just like marching along toward the like the, all of the Pokemon. Yeah, every all Ash of the Pokemon Misty that we never all see Pokemon are all going to this uh, amusement park. Women, I just realized that Misty actually released her Starmie. I don't think she did. No, I think that was the one Pokemon that didn't make. God it. damn it, Misty! Why um, do you like your Staryu so much more? Let Starmie up. Fuck Misty! 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 God. So they, <laughs> Nick is very disappointed in Misty. So they go, uh, they're marching to uh, the, toward the amusement park with this like really cheesy knockoff of the vacation. Vacation all everyone. But it's like a super cheap knockoff. It's vitamin C. She can do what she wants. Okay. Okay. Just cause she's She made hot, me cry mean... with her graduation song. All right. Okay. Graduation was the talk about how friends would separate, but they would remember each other because the, the high school and drama and stuff. No one ever keeps up with people from high school. Let's face it. That oh, that's sad. I'm I'm actually started reconnecting more with my Facebook friends. Actually, kind of thanks to this podcast. Yeah, a little bit. Oh really? Yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah, that's good. All right, so moving on. Uh, so they get into the into the park 
and, and this is where Dexter starts to become the narrator. Yeah. And I wish Dexter was the narrator more often, because he's a good narrator. Like, he he shows off, like, the scientific aspect yeah. of Pokemon, and, like, does, like, cute little computer analysis things. Yeah. I, at first, You sound uh, like you disagree. Well, at first, I, now that I'm thinking about it, I like it a little bit more, but when I was watching it, I was like, well, here's the thing, is that, like, Sometimes Dexter would, like, chime in with, like, stuff that I don't think he needed to. A lot of times when they're just having the, the Pokemon themselves, like, tell the story, it's, it actually kind of works a lot better, I think. That's... Rather than when Dexter chimes in with his stuff. He does it well, but, like, I think it would have been made stronger if he wasn't part If he of wasn't it. part of it, or yeah. at least part of less of it. Yeah, exactly. I, I agree. It would have been nice to, like, just let the natural struggles go out. But I would like to see more behavioral analysis happen. And, like, maybe within the show itself? Within the show itself, yeah. That, that's fair, too. They come across um, Snubble and Meryl, which are our second and third Gen 2 Pokemon that were ever introduced to in the show. First? The first one's technically. No, Togepi. Oh, right, okay. So, yeah, that's true. Togepi. Never mind. That's okay. That's okay. Snubble sounds like a 1940s gangster. Schnubble. and has the f- and has the hairstyle of a 1940s l- great lady. old <laughs> old lady. lady yeah and Meryl just sounds like a fat old lady she does Meryl Meryl yeah there you you do you do it pretty well Snubble. 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 I'm Snubble. see I'm gonna f- murder you oh, see <laughs> that seems to be the subtext so uh, they kind of Pikachu, um, Ash's Pokemon, uh... Oh, and they hang out with a Raichu and a Cubone. Yeah, and Ash's Pokemon, the Pikachu, like, Squirtle and Bulbasaur, they start to have, like, little competitions with them. Like, Squirtle and Meryl get into, like, a swimming race, and they're swimming, and it's... That's actually a pretty entertaining part, when they're trying to have a little because swimming race. Because, why are they aggressive toward each other? Is that, is that just who Snubble and... Yeah. Gang are? Yeah, they're just kind of, they're just kind of jerks, but they're not, like, they're not, like mean they're not they're just, bullies they're not they're bullies. just hey they're, they're, they're just kind of hoity-toity i think hey we're, we're hey it's a couple of chumps there let's let's show them who's the king in the hell if you will they're like that yeah they're like that um but don't forget though forrest the, be- the most part the most beautiful parts of uh this movie this special of this special the little interludes. Yeah. Like by Spell Sprouts and Chanseys and Let's just talk about this for a second. Okay. Because <laughs> this is so weird. Let's. Throughout the movie, <laughs> there are like these little interludes of like very like trip, like trippy very background. Trippy. Uh, Pokemon just repeating like a cry or doing a very elongated cry in Slowpoke's case. And it's just there for no reason. Yeah. Like, you, it was at first a transition scene. Like, going from one segment to the next segment, like, and very... Like, but then later... They become more and more frequent. <laughs> they become more and more frequent, and then they'll come back to the exact same thing. <laughs> like, like it'll be, it'll be Pikachu and uh, Raichu, like, racing and, like, he- uh, headbanging each other. And then it'll do a transition, and then it'll go right back to them again. <laughs> Now, my theory is that it's for the kids, the young kids watching this, so that way they have, like, something to, like, cut back to when they start to lose focus. But then that's so pandering, then. Uh, and besides, they're little Pokemon, it's a like, movie. interacting. Like, it's a movie. You have little Timmy, yeah, the eight-year-old. They, they do it too much. They do it too much. Also, it's only in the first... It's only in this special, not throughout the actual Oh, movie. no, yeah, which I like. Um, it would also wouldn't make sense at all for the movie. It would just <laughs> it would completely so ruin YouTube's uh, so monologues. <laughs> Although now I, I? I kind of want Where to... am I? Bellsprout. Bellsprout. <laughs> Bellsprout. Bellsprout. That's right. I'm a Bellsprout. <laughs> <laughs> it all makes sense now. <laughs> and then he blows up a lab and carries leaves around and spits acid out of people. So the transitions are actually they're actually kind of trippy and kind of cool, but they're like, in my opinion, super unnecessary and pretty pointless. I kind of, well, I kind of like them just because. I like them. They warm you up as the parent, and they warm you up as the tiny infantile kid who doesn't know what the fuck's going on. <laughs> it's just, oh, those are pretty. Oh, those, oh, look a thing. And by the way, that was Slowpoke's things. first uh, real big stardom thing. I think, like his modern meme ism now. Oh, because you. 
Because my 3DS is themed with a little slowpoke theme in the background. And it's adorable. I love slowpoke. Slowpoke's the cutest Pokemon. He is. He's so cute. Alright, so they, uh, they... They all have competitions with each other. Yeah. Goldeen's a d*** to Squirtle. Even yeah. though I thought they were acquaintances, but I guess not. Well, maybe this is a different Goldeen. Maybe. Pikachu and Raichu have a little race. Squirtle and Meryl have a little race. Snubble doesn't do Snubble anything. Doing... He just kind of antagonizes everyone. Yeah, Bulbasaur doesn't really do a whole lot. That's, and then that's pretty much that's, it. That's pretty much it. Um, <laughs> while while Pikachu and Raichu are racing, uh, oh, they knock Charizard off a cliff, and he gets his head stuck in like in a, a little house. chimney thing. Yeah, and then they spend like three minutes trying to get him out. Yeah, and Cubone's all, "I don't want to get it out because I'm the lonely Pokemon." And then he decides to help him because he's not a. Because he's not a complete d- <laughs> Right. And, and they then, get Charizard out, and, and that's that little plot Oh, that by I the way, Team Rocket's Pokemon were there, too. Yeah, but they were literally just there. They were gags. No, they were gags. Like, yeah, they had Meowth little was trying gags. to sleep and never could. Then yeah. he tried to throw a bomb, and then Charizard landed on him. And supposedly Char- uh, Meowth just went up his anus. Just I'd like to butt. think that's how Charizard farts, by the way. <laughs> When the bomb exploded underneath him, <laughs> it's just a <laughs> little crater left behind. Nice, nice. That'd be pretty, uh, pretty gnarly. It would be nuclear fight. That's fire. why I don't have fire Pokemon, because their farts would literally be explosive. Mm-hmm. Um. Well, uh, so what do you think of this little special overall? Oh, are we rating them? Are we rating the do, specials? Do you want to? Yeah, I yeah, would love yeah. to. Actually. Let's let's rate the little special. I'm gonna rate the special. See, it's hard because i i can't really rate it compared to a normal show because it's not a normal show well rate it like in terms of like how good you would you would want the special to be overall because it's just it's just a cute little special okay so i will rate it i'm gonna rate it three you're gonna rate it three i'm gonna give it my baseline of like i i, I enjoyed it but i think they can do better i think they can do a lot better because a lot of it just was kind of random. they can do a lot worse. Oh, yeah. They can definitely do a lot worse. Like, it was cute. The interactions between the Pokemon were cute. I think they could have done better with that because, like, especially with, like, Dexter, like, just chiming in every now and then randomly. Mm-hmm. Um, but when they were, like, just the Pokemon themselves were interacting with each other, it worked a lot better. Snubble and Squirtle's bravado. Yeah. The, it seemed like they were trying to split it up into little segments. Like, first they have the little interaction, and then they're trying to cheer up Togepi, and then they have a Maryland Squirtle race, and then they have a Pikachu, Pikachu and Raichu, Raichu race. race. And then they have Charizard trying to get out of the house or whatever. Like, th- it looked like they were trying to split it up into little segments, but they didn't They didn't really mesh too well. But, like, they just seemed kind of random. I mean, I took the, the two races more of a as a, hey, the two gangs are competing with each other, yeah. but we're not going to fight because we don't need to. Let's right. just race instead. right. Um, so I kind of thought they were connected. Right. So it, it made sense to me. It was just an overall, hey, new kids are joining the playground. Let, the old kids are going to tease them. Right. New kids have to beat them in their own game, and they do. And then they decide to team up together. I thought it was a co- collaborative story. It all yeah. made sense. I'll give it I'll give it three Voltorbs. Like, I think they can do much better, but this wasn't like... This wasn't like why not bad give it a watch. two and a half then? Just just out of curiosity. Well, because like I enjoyed it. I had I had. It was five. a two and a half not an enjoyable. I thought two and a half was like the two straight half, up middle. Two and a half is the straight up middle, and I think I liked it a little bit more than the straight up middle. Okay, gotcha. Because I I, I had I had fun watching it. Like I wasn't like I wasn't like Morton annoyed. Pain. I wasn't in pain. I wasn't annoyed. I wasn't like just waiting for it to be over. So and it's short. It's That's sweet. fair. It's only twenty minutes. You can go see it before watching the movie. Yeah. Completely different tone. It's on YouTube. YouTube go look it on YouTube. And now, it is time... For the main for event! Pokemon! The, the first, first movie. movie! Mewtwo Strikes Back. Against what? Shut up! It strikes back, okay? Against humanity! It's kinda, oh, okay. It's kind of like naming your movie Star Wars, the first movie, The Empire Strikes Back. <laughs> 
Friday the 13th, the first movie, the final Friday. The final Friday. Is that what the first Friday the 13th movie is called? No. Oh. <laughs> That's my point. It's a dumb title. Mewtwo strikes back. Who's Mewtwo? F*** you. F*** you, I'm angry. Why? It's long and complicated and wasn't shown <laughs> to the general public. Oh, okay. That is true. So, uh, for a backstory, we did... Um, Nick and I both watched uh, the original hour and 25 minute version, version of, of the movie. Of the movie. Not, the, not the Japanese dub, but the English dub. And then we both watched the hour and 15 minute version of the movie. Which is the today. exact same thing, just without the... Without, there's like a 10 minute segment early in the beginning that we'll talk about here in a minute that they leave out. But right. I don't... Is there a reason why they left out that 10 minute chunk? I, um, My guess is because it's not super necessary to the plot or anything. Not super necessary to the plot, and also probably just really, really overly sad for, like, the kids. Overly sad without, like, having a reason to be. It, I mean, it shows you why me too is see why he's like that. Those characters again. Well, yeah. Well, you do <laughs> so... technically see the, the starters again. Yes, but you don't see different the iterations other, of them. Yeah, but you don't see the you don't other see characters. Amber. You don't see Amber. You don't see that doctor. You don't see his wife. Oh, you do see the doctor. You have a, like a whole backstory with the doctor and his wife that is never brought up again throughout the rest of the movie. Oh, Doctor Fuji. That's right, the same Doctor like, Fuji give, in the video games. They, you give Doctor Fuji an entire backstory that is never again brought up. Yeah, it's that it shows why he was all super into cloning. Why he's willing to help a crime boss trying to take over the world with a war uh, crime. Yeah, but when but it's, when it's left out, you do not miss it at all. I don't know. It because this me... is the first time I've ever seen that segment, and I've seen the movie a couple times. Never missed it before. See, I I, I disagree. I like the, the fresh perspective on it. Not, or not the fresh perspective, but I, I like the new perspective for it. it Mewtwo's just not a generic ass He's like a guy who experienced the only person he knew dying in front of him, and that that for that he's permanently jaded. And yes, his memories are technically deleted, but something that dramatic cannot just be removed from you like that that easily. Plus, Mewtwo's a psychic type. He probably still has some recognition of that deep in his psychic subconscious. Well, I still say that the whole segment is unnecessary. I, I, so, no, we, I agree to disagree. Agree to disagree. Okay. So the, the movie opens up with like uh, the narration, I think. The, wait, a wait, little wait. Bit are of we talking about the 10 minute thing or are we talking about the not 10 minute thing? Uh, well, let's talk about it. Let's review like the full like, hour and oh, 25 yeah, yeah. minute version. Good, version. good, good. Let's do that. Yeah. Let's do I that. I think that's important too. Because I, I wrote notes for it and I don't want my notes to be in vain. That's fair. That's fair. Um, by the way, I didn't know eyelashes could be fossilized <laughs> and then cloned from them. Because that's also the reason. Th yeah. That also is in the first ten minutes. That. They actually go to New Guinea, get the eyelash, and then start cloning it. I don't know if it was supposed to be an eyelash, but that's... It, it looks, looks like, like an eyelash. Look, that's what it look, I was I, trying so hard to figure out what it was supposed to be. Like, it, was it like a little turkey bone or something? Like, it, the, it was weird. And is it like the from that same Mew? Yeah. Or is it... Do Mews like reproduce normally maybe every time a mew dies a new mew takes its place kind of like a phoenix maybe a but phoenix, then not your cat. but then the first fe but then the first mew still has a fossil like where did this fossil come from i don't know <laughs> that's my question <laughs> i don't know what is this fossil and where did it come from but we open up with a bunch of scientists in the woods looking for mew and they find this fossil and they take it back to the lab and they clone it and, and they clone it. Mewtwo. And it's like little kid Mewtwo. Little kid, the, the, little kid Mewtwo. I don't know if that's the same voice actor, but they, he's a good voice actor. He's really cute. Yeah. He, he's all young and stuff. Yeah. And then you just see an amorphous blob next yeah. to him. <laughs> and then Fuji's looking at him at it and says, soon, soon she'll be brought back. And I'm like, that's gross. Yeah. Yeah. Like, why? Like, I understand the the wanting to not give up on your daughter and if you did miraculously revive her that is cool and she is conscious like she exists she's not like brain dead but she has no body which is why he's into cloning which is why cloning is such an important thing in Mewtwo's life 
after that we get this uh i thought this was actually a pretty good scene where uh amber meets mewtwo and with the three star pokemon and she's like this is the sun this is the the moon wind this is the moon this is the, these are the stars and then like all the pokemon dissolve and they all things. die <laughs> and then she dies and he's like what <laughs> oh god no so if you want to watch the 10 minute the extra 10 minutes just for that i think it would be actually worth it because <laughs> that is a good scene <laughs> although a little horrifying i wish pokemon did dissolve. more stuff like that <laughs> I wish they just were, I wish they were not afraid to let let people die. Yeah. Jesse she face plants into a rock. Well, James and Meowth have to move on. <laughs> a lot of people would be dying in that show. Brock would have died like 12 times. Oh yeah, easily. So this Fuji, his wife has left him. He's trying to bring a daughter back from the dead. We see his actual experiments on Mewtwo. But when we see him in Lavender Town, he's just a caretaker for abandoned Pokemon. Yeah. Um, this Fuji's a lot darker. He is. A lot darker and a lot more dead. It's like the gritty reboot. Like, damn Pokemon. <laughs> you say a lot more dead. Yeah. Because, yeah. Well, Mewtwo, uh, Mewtwo uh, becomes conscious of his surroundings. Um, they wake him up and they're like, ah, you're, you're a clone that we made of a really strong Pokemon named Mew. And he's like, I have no purpose, and he. And just, they were like, just, "Oh, you have purpose. We're gonna take good tests on you." And Mewtwo's like, "Ah, oh, that's bullshit." And he just destroys the entire laboratory. We tried to create the strongest Pokemon, and we succeeded. Now this is uh, about 15 minutes into the into the uncut version, or if you're watching the edited five version, minutes. about five minutes in, Fuji is gone. He is dead. Not in the rest of the you movie. You will not see him in Lavender Town. <laughs> not in the anime. To be fair, we've already gone to Lavender Town in the anime. That's true. That's true. And we did not see him then either. So then comes Giovanni, who who comes to Mewtwo and he's like, Hey, man, you're dark and gritty and I like it. Why don't you come with me? And Mewtwo's like, Well, I do like the fact that you pretty easily walked into this fiery hell <laughs> place that I made. With that suit on, and you don't seem to give a damn. Okay, sure, let's do this. Yeah, Giovanni's kind of a badass. So Giovanni takes Mewtwo, straps him on with all of the, like this. This armor, this like this Iron, Iron Man, Man suit, almost. Mew three for those who remember back in the nineties before yeah. the. I remember that too. I remember that too. The uh, like the rumors were that it was gonna be Mew three. Never happened. Never happened. I, 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 Gladly, looking yeah. back, I'm glad it didn't. That would have been Imagine if dumb. it was like Mew 3, Mew 4, Mew 5, then like Mew 6 is shitty. It's like Magikarp. But then it's Mew 7, he's super powerful. <laughs> it's the same as the androids in Dragon Ball. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> uh, remember when Mega Mew 2Y was first revealed and yeah. everyone thought it was going to be Mew 3? Yeah. Well, not everyone, but a lot of people. It was like one of the theories floating around that it was going to be either Mew 3... Or it was going to be an evolved form of Mew. Or a new two, form of Mew. Or a Mew. new form of Mewtwo. Which is the closest. Or Mew. Technically. Yeah. Yeah. It's a mega form of Mew. Two. So anyway, they strap, Giovanni straps him with this armor. And Giovanni's plan, really, is just to be like, I'm going to bully some trainers who are trying to come in and win a badge. Like, yeah. F, f being a gym leader. Yeah. Uh, just, I'm going to use the most powerful Pokemon ever <laughs> of all time. To just f with some trainers who are trying to come in and win a badge. Sure, I could rob all the banks I wanted to and rule the entire world. But nah, nah, I'm just going to abuse gym trainers just trying to make a living. Oh, and catch Tauroses. Oh, yeah. And then they catch like 50 Tauros. Well, hey, a Team Rock. Imagine finding a Team Rocket member when you're just like in Celadon City and one of them has Tauros. That's gonna f you over. You know, when you think about it, though, are Taros is that hard that you need Mewtwo to help you catch him? Because Ash and Brock caught like 50 Taros. When you only have Zubats and Raditas, yeah. Okay, that's fair. Uh, so Mewtwo is like, dude, f this. I'm not your slave. This cannot be my destiny. <laughs> my destiny is not you and me. And to catch them all, that's not how the song goes, but whatever. <laughs> I'm Mewtwo. So he blows up Giovanni's. Mansion? Man, ba gym? Gym base? Um, and presumably Giovanni as well. He doesn't. Which, if you are not 
like if you if this was like your introduction to Pokemon, like this movie, you've got to be so f***ing lost by this point because you've been introduced to two characters who've been just killed off in like All two seconds. All of the parents who were forced to take their yeah. kids to the movie theater. They have no idea. Like, okay, is this what this movie's gonna be? This like weird cat thing like blowing up people in buildings like for the rest of the movie like, i know billy was talk- telling me about mewtwo but oh but what what <laughs> oh man oh man um but yeah, yeah. that was so mewtwo kind of just mewtwo and then by the way i liked how gary was in there i like to show a little gary yeah with his nido king and uh arcanine arcanine, arcanine. yeah arcanine. Yep. That's an Arcanine. Gary knows what he's doing. Gary knows what he's doing. Those are two of the Pokemon I had in my uh, Pokemon Blue. I traded over. They were good. They're for good. the Arcanine, in case you were wondering how he got that in Blue. But because you can only get they're full picks. They're, they're good. They're blue. good Pokemon. Yeah. They're good Pokemon. They are. So Mewtwo goes back to the island where he was before. And it's like the same... He's like in the same exact spot where he's like... What is my purpose? What is my destiny? Blah, blah, blah. Except, like, I mean, honestly, you could have taken out the Giovanni shit, too, and nothing in this movie would have changed. They would have missed a cameo. They would have changed if you had taken out Giovanni's entire capturing of Mewtwo. Mewtwo? Okay, no, no, no. Mewtwo did learn how to focus his powers with Giovanni. He did. Mewtwo could have probably learned to do that by himself. But now we know a definite. Oh, here's how Mewtwo learned how to control his powers. It's, it's such like a, it's just such like a, a quick like scene is edited so like shakily that like, it would I don't have been, know. it would have been worse to watch a scene a uh, scene of Mewtwo naturally learning how to it, control his I powers. Think, I think it would have been better if if the scientists had managed to do that instead of Giovanni, and then at the end of that they he. Mewtwo had blown up the building. So the scientists just go around beating up poor Pokemon trainers. Well, not, well, it doesn't have to be that, but like maybe they're trying to like uh, test his powers like with different Pokemon and stuff. You know, like uh. they're the ones who like put the armor on and everything. And then it also would have been a lot more satisfying to see Mewtwo blow up the building and all the scientists at the end of that instead. That would have been that would have that would have been cool if a guy had brought in a hound door and said. Sir, Mewtwo's powers aren't working on this gu- on this Pokemon. <laughs> oh, that's weird. Huh. Oh, well. <laughs> and then Mewtwo just explodes everyone anyway. Yeah. And the Houndor is just there like, oh, well, I'm <laughs> fireproof too. Where's, where's my master? <laughs> Where, where's my master? No, oh, no. Where's my master? Mewtwo's like, I'm your master now. But, uh, no, I... Again, I... I think it was the cleanest they could have done it with Giovanni, because that's... With Giovanni, I don't know, like, I I just think it would have been better off if they hadn't had Giovanni in there at all. Giovanni could have been, like I said, Giovanni could have just been taken out of the movie. Well, have it you heard... It would have changed. Have you heard the theory on, like, in red and blue and yellow, why Giovanni takes over to Celadon City, or has a base in Celadon City and tries to take over Silphco? He's trying to take over Silphco because Silphco is making the Master Ball. The Master Ball is the only ball that can catch Mewtwo successfully so Mewtwo, so Giovanni's trying to f- cr- uh, fix the mistake he made by creating Mewtwo so Giovanni in canon if this theory is true is the one who funded the Mewtwo creation thus it only makes sense for Giovanni to pick up Mewtwo and train him that's true I mean that would have been a different movie if we had gone that route like something like that that would have been a completely different movie but i'm saying but in in the context of this movie like we didn't need giovanni at all yeah but okay so anyway but moving on to lighter things yeah now we get well now we go back to ash and the gang ash and the gang which <laughs> ash is almost like a side character in this movie just because of like how like until like the last like half third, hour, yeah. Until the last like half hour of this movie, Ash doesn't do a He's whole lot. He's not a lot. driving character. No, not at all. Like we just kind of follow him, but he doesn't do a whole lot of Mm-mm. anything at all. Um, he does more than Team Rocket, but. By the way, who carries that table and umbrella? Oh yeah, they're sitting at a table and an umbrella. They have a whole picnic set up. <laughs> yeah, with the table and umbrella, and that, and Nick was like, who, "Who's who's carrying that?" It's no. They're always walking with backpacks yeah. and little bags. No table. No awkwardly folded table with them. No umbrella sticking out of my theory, backpack. My theory is that 
they're like items, and you can just like use a Pokeball on them, and they just stay in the Pokeball. I mean, in the games, that's what happens with yeah. items. You find them in Pokeball. It's like Capsule Corp in Dragon Ball. Yeah, exactly. Your theory is darker, though. <laughs> I said... Psyduck just holds on to them. <laughs> Psyduck just holds them, and Misty makes Psyduck hold them inside the Pokeball. Every time Psyduck releases itself, it just throws the table away in protest. <laughs> and Misty punches Psyduck to be like, No, Psyduck! That table is you! Yeah, she doesn't abuse Psyduck at all in the movie, which is good. The parents would have been upset. They would have been. They would have been like, what is this shit? If the parents watch this show with the kids, they'll be more upset than at the movie. Yeah. Um... Did I just so say this pirate guy, man? oh yeah, yeah, this... a pirate man. <laughs> pirate. He's a straight up pirate. This guy randomly walks up, and he's like, he is, he's he's kind of dressed like a pirate. He's got like a little vest with no shirt, and he's got, he's got a, a little, little bandana. And bandana. Yeah, purple pants. Purple pants, and he's like, "Are you Ash from Pallet? I think he says Town of Pallet. Are you Ash from from Pallet Town or whatever?" And Ash is like, yeah. He's like, I challenge you to a Pokemon battle. And Ash is like, oh, yay. Now I can actually move around and not be and not have to worry about chores and stuff. Yeah, I'll battle you. And Misty's like, fuck you, Ash. Like, you come lazy on. Lazy piece of shit, Ash. By the way, this pirate also has a name. And because I looked up. We were trying to decide if all the names. characters. Because they're not given names in the movie. Like, their their names are never revealed, but. Mm -mm. Apparently their names are on the uh, internet. They are. Load. You should have kept the uh, page open. It was open. No. Oh. His name is Load. <laughs> it's not Load. But it's Raymond. His name is Raymond. His name is Raymond. Okay. Raymond the Pirate. Raymond the Pirate. <laughs> I don't think his name is Raymond the Pirate, but let's call him Raymond the Pirate. He carries a sword in his official picture. So Raymond the Pirate... Uh, sends out first look, look a... At, look at that sword. That's a nice sword. Wow, yeah. yeah. Alright, why can't we follow that guy around a little bit more? I, I don't know. Because he's just a random employee of Mewtwo. Well, he... I don't think he is. I could be wrong, but I don't think he's has any affiliation with Mewtwo Why would he search out for Ash specifically? Why would Mewtwo search out for Ash specifically? Ash is... Mewtwo's looking for all, like, for generic trainers. And so he's, like, heard of Ash. Like, oh, Ash probably has some gym badges. So, let's send out this hired guy. Yeah, six. Hey, six is decent. Yeah, but other people have, like, 40. Th those other people are rare. Like, not not everyone goes out of the, uh... Why isn't you two looking for, like, Lance or Agatha or Cynthia or... Because that movie <laughs> would be too interesting. <laughs> And it would be spoilers for the kids who haven't played that yet. I guess that movie would be too interesting. Yeah, that's one of my big. Well, that's one of my hangups is that Mewtwo's the the trainers that Mewtwo gets like they don't make sense. Like Ash beats this uh, this trainer Raymond, um, who has like a Don fan weirdly. By the way, he has a Don fan. Yeah, yeah he has a Don fan weirdly, um, which Bulbasaur beats, and he has a Machamp, Machamp that. Squirtle beats with Bubble Beam. In one hit. With one hit. Like, holy crap. Maybe that's why Mewtwo was so impressed. He's like, holy shit. Plus then Pikachu, like, knocks out a golem who's part ground type with an electric Along type. Along with a pincer Along and a Venomoth. Along with a pincer and a Venomoth. So maybe, yeah, maybe Mewtwo is right and being like, alright, this guy's a good trainer. F*** it. Get him over here. F*** it. I want me some electric type Pokemon that I can hit ground types. Oh, by the way, um, just because I'm on the page... This was the debut of Mewtwo in the original series. Mew, Alakazam, Donphan, Nidoqueen, Seedra, Golduck, and Wigglytuff. Oh, that makes sense. So after uh, Ash beats this guy... Uh, He's like, oh, no! <laughs> the guy took it really well. <laughs> he did not mind losing. No, he did lose. He, he, was, he, was, he was very upset about it. I know, that was being sarcastic. Oh, it's not a genuine... <laughs> no, this guy was upset as f about it losing <laughs> he's like how could i lose to a squirtle ah! uh, my goal is ground time he should have squashed your pikachu <laughs> full hacks hacks i call hacks so after that um you two is talking to this chick and his chick is like you want me to send an invitation to this guy like you, you took out a golem with a pikachu that seems pretty good and then no answer 
as you wish. <laughs> By the way, uh, let me get back. Misty has the laziest puns. Oh, yeah, she does. That certainly was a shocking ending. Shut up, Misty. Leave the Shut puns up, Misty. to Team Rocket. Team Rocket. That's what they Team Rocket's job is, okay? Just let them do it, okay? I don't need to hate you any more than I already do, Misty. So, speaking of Team Rocket, you see Team Rocket peering off onto Ash and the gang. And they close in on Ash. And he's eating bread really weird. He's like... I <laughs> who eats bread like that if it was a sandwich sure but straight up bread I love how team and I love how team rock is like oh we should go steal the Pokemon but Meowth and or Jesse's like that and Meowth and James are like we're hungry dude let us eat like let's just go ask them for like some bread and something be like hey we won't steal Pokemon from you today and, if, like, if, you get, if you feed us if food. you feed us because we're starving and Jesse has a frying pan. And she just pulls know. that out, like, she out of pulls it nowhere. Out, out of nowhere. Like, she just does a hand movement, and all of a sudden, it's there. Important to know, because uh, Mewtwo sends out a Dragonite, which, first of all, he has a Dragonite that does not appear in the rest of the movie, which is bullshit. It's total bullshit. He has a fucking Dragonite. I mean, he's a Mewtwo. Yeah, but he has a Dragonite for later purposes Ma that's important to know. Okay, Mewtwo's all about, like, optimization of his Pokemon. This Dragonite is clearly only a Messenger Dragonite, so it only has speed IVs and EVs. <sighs> so anyway, this so it doesn't battle. Messenger Dragonite extreme speeds to um, Ash and Gang, and he gives them an invitation. And by the way, really pretty orchestra music is playing while he flies. <laughs> Only when he flies. Only when he flies. That is Dragonite's best special ability. Special ability. So he gives them the the invitation. This this really cool little hologram pops up, and she's like, "You're invited to this uh, Pokemon Champions tournament. You want to come?" And they're like, "Yeah, we want to go." And Brock has to ask her to rewind it because he wants to see it again. <laughs> and we're like, "Brock, just Brock, either just take catch it up into, or the, just, into the bushes. Just go." Do that on your own time. Like, for real. Alright, so Brock uh, asked him to rewind the invitation. They're like, no. No, Brock. Come on, it was weird. a really simple message. Yeah. <laughs> Can you not remember it? Just, so. just let's just <laughs> can sign the postcard. Yes. <laughs> okay, great. And Dragonite flies off, and Mi and Jesse fucking stops that motherfucker with a frying pan. Jesse has super strength. She like, really does. Like, that was impressive. That is a 300 pound dragon flying at supersonic speeds and get stopped with a frying pan and Jesse doesn't move. And by the way, the music stops. Yeah. <laughs> Just proving the actual point. It's canon. Exactly. Music plays while Dragon Eye flies. <laughs> so then they find out where they're going and so that's how Team Rocket goes he off goes, to right. go stalk Ash and Company. So they go to this uh, port. It's called like Old Port or something. Old Shore Port. Old, old Shore Port. And, uh, and it's raining. And it's raining because Mewtwo is like making a big old storm happen with his hands. With his hands, he's using rain dance. By the way, there's no Mewtwo can learn rain dance. You can. Yeah. Um. By the way, there is no uh rain like in the animation in the scene when they're running up to the um, whoops harbor. Well, they're preparing themselves for the rain. <laughs> Even though they're covering themselves, they see the rain clouds <laughs> they and they're like, in. "Okay, let, let's let's not be wet." They get inside and they're um. And they're like, oh, we're so wet now. Well, that because there was a scene we kind of missed where it started raining, and then they got into the building. And then they got, okay, great. Okay, great. And so then there's a whole bunch of trainers who are also invited. Like for, 50. Like 50, including someone who has a Caterpie, and then another <laughs> someone who has a Weedle. Like, Why? How, what did they do in order to deserve <laughs> Mewtwo's recognition? Mewtwo is just, like, casting out all kinds of... Like did the Weedle man. take out a Narcissus or something? <laughs> did it just sit there and use Protect? <laughs> like Weedle can't learn Protect. I don't know. Maybe he TM'd it. He can't get TM'd to Protect. Maybe <laughs> the Weedle died. It was a Beedrill, and it died, and its offspring is a Weedle. You know what? That has to be it. That has to be it. There's also a Caterpie. Why else would you have a Weedle and a Caterpie? Like, it's... So that's so dumb. Like even Ash has stronger Pokemon. Yeah, like for real. So this uh, the inside the the harbor or whatever. This um, Officer Jenny is talking, um, and this this other lady, who is only in this movie for this scene, and then at the very end of the movie. And this is a very detailed yeah. lady. Like she's Late. all like characters designed. 
She's got the vent, the 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 mid, hair, the Eastern European accent. Yeah, like they like they gave like hired a special voice actress just for her. I'm assuming. Do we even know her name? We never learn her name or anything. She, but she's she, just like, the doc governor or something. And she like has gives like the whole backstory of stuff. I don't know. I was zoning out because she was. It wasn't. She's, she's talking about like long ago. The prophets said that like there would be a great storm of calamity. And by the way, you have a government job. Why are you bringing like religion and prophecy into this? Don't even, don't. even the trainers are looking at her with like angry faces. Like, dude, you're spouting some horse right now, man. You were spouting some horse shit. And, and she and Officer Jenny call this the worst storm of all time. Shut up, New Orleans. Well, this was before <laughs> New Orleans, to be fair. This is the worst storm of all time. Like, they're fine. <laughs> like, later, there are Officer, no buildings. Officer be, Jenny's hat blows away a little bit apart. later, but like, they're fine. But no, this is the worst storm of all time. Um, I think the only other information we learn in there that's really important is that Pokemon the, Tears can do something. Po- yeah, she she mentions they also mentioned this um, way earlier in the movie. Amber does to Mewtwo. She like shoehorns in there. Cause they're all crying. Yeah, she shoehorns in there that Pokemon Tears like can bring things to life. And this lady, I don't know what to call her, Harbor Master. Harbor Master. Harbor Master lady. She horns Blue it in it again. Yeah, she she horns it in it again that Pokemon Tears do something magical. I don't even remember the context of what she of why she said it. Uh, yeah, like, like they it would stop the storm. Or yeah, something, something like, like that. Some something for convenience's sake later. Yeah, something so to feel Deus Ex like Machina if that happens. So that so that that way later at the very end of the movie it doesn't look like complete horse <laughs> what happens. <laughs> the only other thing that we find out is that the Nurse Joy at that town's. Pokemon Center has been missing for like a month. Also, Officer Jenny's like, that uh, Pokemon Center is uh, completely shut down. It's closed. Cause, uh, Hire no- a replacement. Right? <laughs> like, we've even been shown in the anime, in the context of the anime, that like, a doctor, a regular doctor, can fulfill that role, at least in a temporary like, fashion. Like, that's not how Pokemon Centers even work. If, yeah. If, <laughs> there should be, first of all, there should be more than one employee. Second of all, like, the hospitals don't close down when the head doctor is out of town. No. They continue functioning in case of emergencies. Because emergencies happen. Like, I don't know, gigantic storms that could potentially wipe out humanity. So they go, and this is great. This was one of my favorite things was when you pointed out to me the Firo part. Um, yeah. They go out, because uh, a bunch of the trainers, like four other trainers, plus Ash and Misty and um, Brock are so like, some trainers say, you. We're gonna go swim to the island anyway. F*** you. So uh, they get onto like a Gyarados and a Pidgeot, and I don't remember what the other girl rides. Uh, and she rides a Dugong. A Dugong, that's right. And a Fira. And a blonde lady. One girl has a Fira that she's on. We see it in two shots, and I miss, missed it both time, uh, both shots when I watched it the first time. Mm-hmm. Or at least I didn't pay attention to it. And we never we see never, her again. We never see her or the Firo ever again. She died. She died. <laughs> I mean, Officer Jenny did say, this storm could kill you, so... So, hey, it did. It did. It, Officer it, Jenny it did not lie. Her. Nope. Officer Jenny did not lie. Ash and the gang send out Star You and... No, oh, no, no, don't. first. No, first. they don't. Yeah, you're right, you're right. Because you right. pointed out this, this to me when I was like, Team Rocket didn't serve a point in the movie. They did you serve like, a point. hey, they were Vikings. They were Vikings. They go up to Ash and company and they say, hey, we'll help you go across the sea, ya. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, okay. And I'm okay, like, Vikings, sure. Uh, I didn't know Vikings still existed. Right? And Ash says they live in Minnesota. Which I, that was funny. That was funny. That was Minnesota funny. Minnesota Vikings. I like how they're like, well, no fairies, no giant fairies can ride out this storm. Small wooden boat, all right, <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> well, predictably, a wave crashes over them. And Team Rocket's revealed, and they're like, ah, oh, f*** you, Team Rocket, and then they leave. And then they, yeah, well, they, the boat is lost. Misty sends out a star, and she holds on to him, and Ash sends out a squirrel, and he and Pikachu hold on to him, and Why Brock's like, oh my like god, I'm, I don't know. Like, send out... You can send out two Pokemon in in case of emergency, Misty. Nope. Nope. Only one, ever. Yeah. Only one. In fact, she will sooner let Brock drown than send out a second Pokemon. (laughs) Because Brock is like, oh god, I'm drowning. Then send out Starmie. It's faster. It has... It's better to withstand the storm. 
And in, in, in case you find wild Pokemon, it's able to defend itself better. Yeah. Like, no. So Sorry, it's easier to draw. <laughs> That's right. So they ride through the waves for a little bit. They go underwater for like a really long time. And Squirrel's finally like, oh, oh shit. Oh, like, sh that's they right. breathe air. They they need air, and this was like my favorite shot in the movie was when they were trying to when they were swimming up and out of the water to breathe, like it, it was actually really cool. It was a nice look. It's a nice, done shot. Yeah, because it it's it reminds me of how it feels to like need to swim up to the surface and then you finally breathe through, and you like you see the clear sky and everything. It's actually a really good shot. And they don't even ask about Team Rocket. Nope, <laughs> they don't even talk about it. They just go on they're like oh great the island did team rocket survive who they're, cares they're, they're hopeful but they also know better than to question out loud because <laughs> they know that they'll just be shut down because if they know that team rocket's there then they know they have to go save them yep. but if they don't know that they don't have to that's right so this nurse joy who is the lady that mewtwo is is under her he she's Hypnosis. under his control yeah greets them greets them they that's for the them. invite it, yep. Which, Which thank God, Ash, the invite. Ash didn't had it in out. his pocket, in his jacket pocket, aka the one pocket that you have in your clothing that <laughs> will always fall out of for no reason. Somehow it made it through the storm. Thank God. That would have been a really awkward movie if it didn't. Like. Yeah. Also, the electrical bits in it did, were not affected by the water at all because it still turned on and everything just fine. I mean, I if I were the person who was hypnotized by Mewtwo, and if Mewtwo had allowed me to recognize things, if I had seen the general hologram placer thing, I'd have been like, oh, hey, yeah, no. Yeah, it doesn't that, work? That, that's oh, right. it's good the storm? That makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, yeah, you can go in. They go in, uh, this guy is like petting his Pidgeot. Oh, Cory. Cory was petting his Pidgeot, and he's like, yeah, it was no uh, problem for me to go over here when I was writing on the back my of Pidgeotto. Pidgeotto. Wait, why didn't I send up my Pidgeotto? <laughs> Damn it, Ash! And it's like, yeah, Pidgeotto does not make an appearance in this movie. No. And that is a Pidgeot. That is, there is no excuse for that. To be fair, that Pidgeot is making Pidgeotto sounds. That is true, too. It's a Pidgeotto! <laughs> that is a clear Pidgeotto cry. Are, and, you, are you looking up the names of the other two? Yeah. Alright. Yeah. So Corey's like, what took you guys so long? And Ash says, F you, that's a Pidgeot. I wish you know. <laughs> and then they, he shows off his Pokemon. He has a Venusaur and some like fairly balanced Pokemon. Yeah. Including an Scyther. Alakazam. No, it's a Scyther. But no, not, but it's an Alakazam, though. But no, it's a Scyther! No, Scyther has like two spoons <laughs> and has a little, a giant little mustache. mustache. Alakazam has two giant scythes and is a bug type that says Scyther. <laughs> Get your Pokemon right, Forrest. Later on in the movie, Dean Rocket's like, who's that Pokemon? It's a very obvious hologram or uh, outline of Scyther. And they say, Alakazam. There's not even so an Alakazam. Confidently. <laughs> There's not, so confidently. There's not even Alakazam in the movie. If it hadn't been for the Pidgeot, uh, Pidgeotto uh, mix-up earlier, I might excuse that as just like a as an honest mistake on Team Rocket. But no, part. this is way too many mistakes. Way too many mistakes. There's another one later on that they get wrong too. What is it? No, oh, well, they also get Sandshrew and Sandslash mixed up. They do. Oh, by the way, the blue lady, her name is Miranda. Miranda? Miranda. She is the... Wait, is there a Bulbapedia page on Miranda? Yeah. Are you serious? It's really short. I would think so. Her trivia is her Japanese voice actress and the voice actor of another character in the first movie. Okay, what whatever that one is. Also worked together in a Pokemon-based band. Great. Oh, she and the guy who voices the pirate guy. <laughs> Good. Are in a Pokemon-based band. Good. I'm glad that they're here, then, in this movie. So then... Uh, they meet the other two trainers as well. Fergus and Nisha. Fergus and Nisha. Fergus is an all-water Pokemon trainer, except Nid Nidoqueen. Except for Nidoqueen. Who has a Gyarados. Anisha has all the cute Pokemon. And she's got like a Ninetales, a Rapidash, uh, Dugong, Dugong a Blastoise, Blastoise, Vileplume, and Wigglytuff. Wigglytuff. Not that it's like important to know these Pokemon at all. They're, they're there. It helps to visualize in case it helps you to haven't visualize. seen. Yeah. I mean, if you haven't seen the Pokemon first movie by this point, like. I mean, I don't know. Maybe, weird, maybe we have a but... bunch of people who just like our banter and not the Pokemon. That's fair. Yeah. That's fair. I gotta, gotta include the the adults who weren't allowed to watch Pokemon as children. That's fair. In our audience. Thumbs up if you're one of those. <laughs> or if you're not one of those. Just thumbs up. Thumbs up. Thumbs up all around. 
Yay. Mewtwo reveals himself at this point. Oh, yeah. And he's like, I'm the world's strongest Pokemon trainer. I'm also and, a Pokemon. And Fergus is like, F you, Pokemon can't be a Pokemon master. And Mewtwo says, what rule is that? <laughs> Show me that rule in the pool. And then he tell, and then he throws, throws Fergus into the, into the pool, and it's hilarious. And he's like, oh, I'm not taking that shit. I'm a Pokemon! <laughs> F*** you. He's so racist. <laughs> he is racist. So he has Gyarados hit uh, Mewtwo with a hyper beam, and Mewtwo's like, no, I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna mirror code it. Mirror code that motherfucker. And Gyarados goes down. Which is important to know, that he reflected a hyper beam back at Gyarados and took him out. Because later, the other guy... Corey? Corey. Corey is like, well, why can't we just catch this guy? Rhyhorn hit him. And he sends out Rhyhorn. It's like, dude, don't be a f***ing idiot. Well, hold on. He reflected a uh, energy plasma cannon, not a rock solid Pokemon, rhinoceros Pokemon. Yeah, but what happens to the Rhyhorn? It gets deflected it gets back. Deflected in because it's. Turn it, Corey. Because <laughs> he's obviously a really strong Pokemon. Like, don't be this is why you can't catch me. <laughs> I'm level 100. You're all level 20. Tops. Yeah, 50. I'll give him 50. Depending Com on the Pokemon. Comparatively, like, it, it, like I'm just saying it on uh, a scale. Comparatively. Comparatively, like, on a scale. Yeah. Like, like yeah. it's Frieza to Goku from Dragon Ball. Yeah. I would say that's fair. Okay. I would say that's fair. Oh, by the way, Team Rocket survived, by the way, in case anyone was wondering. Certainly not Ash and Company. Because <laughs> Weezing is the next best thing to go through waves if you don't have a water Pokemon. <laughs> I feel so bad for that Weezing. I mean, it's been a gas. It's buoyant. <laughs> and then Q Adorable Mew with uh, the fan. Yeah. The first of yeah. many adorable Mew gifts. Yeah. Mew is, Mew is so cute in this movie. Doesn't have a whole lot of personality, but he's cute. He's his, cute. his personality is that he's cute. So uh, Team Rocket also get onto that, and they're trying to get through. And you point out Mewtwo has a really interesting like understanding of uh, for someone who's a newly born clone and like doesn't have a whole lot of knowledge of like the human world. He seems to have a whole lot of knowledge about human architecture. Oh, he do. He does. He does. He's created this entire f***ing mansion. Yeah. And it has like water pipes and ladders, and, like this whole thing that Mewtwo doesn't need. Yeah. And yet, why, why doesn't he have them? It's like when we get to the stadium in a little bit, and, like, it's got seats. It's got seats. <laughs> like, was he were... expecting everyone to be able to brave through the storm? Yeah. Surely not. And was he like, all right, you guys are just going to sit here and watch while I uh, murder everyone? <laughs> Great. <laughs> Great, cool. Like, what was, what was your plan? I think he had, like, two plans. <laughs> he wanted to mesh them together, but you can't. Because it's either invite everyone over and have them watch, or only invite the elite over and, and create a giant storm so only the elite can come. Yep. And and then he kind of just prepares for both and only the elite come, because that's how you set it up. Because that's how you set it up. Mewtwo's Mute probably not the best strategist. No. He has the best smirk, though. That's true. He Mute does have Mute the best smirk. <laughs> Is, is that the a best challenge? Thing, yes, <laughs> is the best thing ever. Um, there's occasionally like really, really good animation in this movie. I will give it that. Yeah, no. There's, there's... also, at times though, they're also like really cheap animation in this movie. If you notice, are you talking about like when the color palettes are swapped or something? Not necessarily, but that too. Because that 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 was our I was willing to forget. It's just like uh, well, like like, like like Mewtwo's like little mansion has like really ornate and like really nice looking but at the same time like get out into like the to the arena and it's just like one color just painted like with little detail yeah um for the most part i'd say that this movie is well animated especially when compared to the show though oh my god especially to the show especially when compared to the show it's beautiful compared to the show it's gorgeous compared to the show uh what is that oh i also asked what that yellow pin was for.